the Coop. This is another edition to Joke Time with Coop. Insightful BS by my Laker teammates and NBA legends. And in the house today, we got Norm Nixon, a guy that, uh, and I always say, this is one guy, this is that, this guy is this, this guy is that. But truly, truly, this is the guy that really helped me uh, become a professional basketball player. Because when I got with the Lakers, I was just a guy out of New Mexico. It was Norm, Jamal Wilkes, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And they were a very good basketball team then. And then you throw in Kenny Carr and Lou Hudson and Juan Boone and some of those guys. But that was the core of the team. So when I got with the Lakers, I was very excited to be drafted by them. But let me give out some stats for Norm real quick. Not going to give them out because there's too many. But some of his highlights, he's a two-time NBA champion, a two-time NBA All-Star, 82-85, NBA All-Rookie first team in 1978. Uh his jersey was retired by Duquesne. I ain't never had a jersey retired except for him. Well, they don't even have it here in my house. So I don't get that retired at all. <laughs> he had 12,065 points, career points, 6,386 assists, and 1,187 steals. And before steals were popular, as popular as they are today, Norm Nixon was one of the best. We welcome Norm Nixon to the Showtime with Coop podcast. Sir, how are you doing? Man, I'm doing just lovely, Coop. Man, you you got me over here to tears, man. I know I I, I influenced you like that. <laughs> well, you did, Norm. Seriously, because you're the one that taught me how to play the game and how to be a pro when I first got with the Lakers. And although I got hurt my first year, you're always in my ear, giving me this, giving me that. And you know what, Norm? One thing I think about a lot, and obviously we know how great and and Magic was when he got with the Lakers in 1980. But I, I sometimes tell friends on the street, I wonder. Could Norm and Coop, because had I not been injured, we'd have probably had a year together with Kareem and Jamal. I mean, with, yeah, Kareem and Jamal. I wonder what would the Lakers have been as dominating? Well, uh, you, you can't ever take away Magic's impact. I don't think it's dominating, but we got a taste of what we could do when he was hurt uh, the year we lost, when you and I started together for about 23 games, and we actually uh, played extremely well together. You can't take away. I tell people all the time, uh, Magic and I together were arguably, you know, the best backcourt in the league. And then when they throw you in there, the three of us together probably was one of the best trios to ever play the game because I thought we could do everything. You and I could pick, keep up full court. You and Magic could rebound. Magic and I passed the basketball. You know, your defense was on a level like no other guards. You know, so I think the three of us, the combination, man, that was like one of the coldest three guards to ever play together. We could do it all. We knew every position. For sure. You played two, three, four. Magic played two, three, four. I knew one, two, but I knew everybody's role, what they were supposed to do. So we could change up. We could flip at the drop of a hat. So it was like really exciting. You know, I, I'm very excited about to talk a little bit more about the Lakers, but let's jump back a little bit because as I do my homework for these podcasts and I start looking up people, uh, Nick, you're impressive in high school, man. You uh, won a state title, 6'5", and uh, jumping in the high jump. Yeah. Making Georgia. Uh, you were all everything. Uh, you even had a free agent tryout with the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Cowboys. Tell well, us about your high school I, years. I'll just correct one thing. I, I won the region in the high jump at 6'5". You know, oh, okay. when I got to the state, those boys were drinking, jumping seven feet. You couldn't just run and jump over it like we were doing. <laughs> so, so somebody's lying on your stats then. <laughs> you know, I'll let it stay there. But uh, we did win the state in track, though. We won the state. You know, And you ran the 440, too, right? I was on the 440, 4x1, uh, and then the 4x4 four four relay team, so... We won the state in that. Then I was all city in football and of course in basketball and we won the state in basketball. So I had, I had a fun, fun uh, college career. But Coop, you know, we grew up, you did everything. You didn't just yeah. play, I mean, in Georgia, we did everything. We played baseball, football, basketball. That's why sometimes I had a problem with this AAU because they specialize so much the kids don't get to play other sports. And for sure my football hit my basketball and my basketball hit my football. And, um, you know, there's this old saying that goes, give it to Mikey, he eats anything. You remember that commercial? Yeah, oh, totally. Mikey, he eats anything. Uh, with our team, give it to Mikey. Yeah. Well, go ahead. Well, the <laughs> thing with you is give it to Norm because he does everything. Is that <laughs> safe to say that? Well, you know, look, you try to be a renaissance man. You know, when you come <laughs> up, the definition of educated man was a renaissance man. A little, knew a little bit about music, arts, sports, you know history and, all those and things we're getting it done in the classroom too because you were uh, president 
of the of what class? Of, of my senior class in high school. In yeah. high school. Yeah. God damn, Norm Nixon. I knew there was some <laughs> special stuff about you, man. Uh, you finish up in high school at Southwest and you find yeah. yourself at Duquesne. How did you find yourself there? Well, you know, at that time, there weren't that many African-Americans in uh, the SEC. So I was recruited heavily by some SEC schools in both football and basketball. And uh, I visited Duquesne and I went up and I, and you know, Duquesne that time was an independent school. You know, we played Notre Dame, we played all the big schools. And uh, I just had such a good time, you know, and I wanted to get out of the South to try something different. So I went there and, uh, you know, it, it was just a great experience. Um, you were always known for that, that patented jump shot when you got with the Lakers. Was that being developed in high school totally. and at Duquesne? Totally, totally. I told someone, you know, my, my transformation, I think, um, when I realized I could play my junior year, uh, coming into my junior year, there was another guy that was a star. He had started two years as well, but he was going to be a senior. I was going to be a junior. Duquesne team, he was, you know, was me and this guy, Roland Jones, great player, could score 6'5", strong, and the night before the first game, uh, he broke his foot. And so I was, I couldn't sleep, man. I'm laying there going, what am I going to do now? In my first game, I had an incredible game, like 38 points, but I was so tired, Coop. And you know my game. I tried to play defense, score, pass. I tried to affect the game in a lot of ways. And I just laid in the bed and said, this is going to be too hard for me. But that year, I learned how to score 20 points and keep my teammates involved. So my senior year, when I walked out on the court at Duquesne, I knew I was going to get 20 plus points and a bunch of assists because I just had adapted and figured it out. How come you gave up football? Well, you know, I was recruited, you know, I went into University of Georgia locker room and um, the big lineman walked in there and I looked at those big <laughs> guys and I said, you know, I think I'm going to wait out the basketball season. <laughs> <laughs> Smart man. He was trying to get me to sign before uh, basketball season was over. So I backed off. Uh, we have some young young kids that listen to the podcast. Uh, you being an excellent student athlete, uh, going on your double major, uh, talk to them about what it took for you to stay, to get it done in the classroom so you can get it done on the court. And then when you retire, to be getting it done in the, in the uh, corporate world today. Well, I, I just said, you know, in school, I had two jobs to be a student athlete, you know, because uh, there was no guarantee about sports, you know, coming from a small town, playing at a small school, you never know how this thing was going to turn out. So I was always one to try to prepare for plan B and plan B for me was to get my degrees to make sure uh, uh, if I didn't play professional sport, I had something to fall back on and some fall back on and have some kind of direction. Uh, fortunately for me, I did have the skills to, to, to play, um, play basketball but I, I always tell kids and I won't name his name I knew a free agent once um, signed a signed a big contract went out and played ball that night and tore his knee up they snatched that contract off the table so fast and that's when it makes you realize this is a business you better be fair be prepared because it could end at any moment and then as an agent I used to tell players you know you prepare for retirement day one because this thing could be over so fast and, you know, we make a lot of money fast and not very much money at the end of our careers. So you have to try to pound that into young guys. And as far as uh, young kids is going out trying to get in the corporate world, like my son and I was having this discussion, you know, and he's always talking, about, Dad, you know, you always want degrees or the education, the education. I was like, yeah, education was a way for us to, uh, uh, to kind of get out a lot of times during my era. But I say education doesn't necessarily mean degrees. It means whatever you choose to do, Make sure you understand that business, you research that business, you're educated about that business. So education takes many forms. It's not just a book degree. It's experiences in life, and it's being prepared and, and uh, getting yourself ready to have the best possible chance to succeed in whatever field you choose. See why I, I got up under that guy's wings. Norm is, I'm, I'm telling you, he's a spectacular player. He's very, very special. I love this guy to death. We still have a special relationship. But um, Norm, so you finish at Duquesne, have a great season. You get drafted by the Lakers. Jerry West uh, is the head coach. Did you think you were going to get drafted by the Lakers or were you hoping or where were you thinking you were going to go? Well, I thought I was going to get drafted by Boston because my junior year, going into my senior year, Red Albrecht used to have a camp up at Boston every summer where he brought his rookies in. And you have college players work the camp. And at night, you know, the college players play and then his rookie practice. So I went up my junior year and we played. I played in the college league, but he took me out of 
out of the college league and put me in there with his rookies. So I scrimmaged with the rookies when they had that open scrimmage for the public. And every player, every fan walked out and said, hey, man, you're going to make this team. You're going to make this team. And I was still a junior in college. I wasn't even one of his draft picks. So I really thought uh, Boston or New York, someone on the East Coast was going to draft me because, you know, we weren't on television. So those guys <laughs> had the opportunity to uh, see me play. So there was no way in the world that I thought I was going to get drafted by the Los Angeles Lakers because I was sitting there going, I got drafted. You know, I'm from Georgia. I said, that's the farthest place in the world I could get drafted to. So my parents wouldn't be able to see me play, my mom and all of them, because I was so far away. So technically, I really didn't want to come this far. But then, you know, I came out, you know, the rest is kind of history. Got out here, loved it, and, uh, you know, it turned out well for me. What did you know about the Lakers when you were drafted? Well, so, well, a couple of things, but it's so interesting. You know, growing up in Georgia, we really didn't see that much NBA. And, you know, we're a little older than you. You had ABC, you know, CBS and uh, NBC. That was it. It was no cable, <laughs> kind of that stuff. No you Netflix. Know, our, <laughs> yeah, our television, our television package back in the day would be seven, eight national games and maybe 20 or something regional games. So no one got to see us play. You know what I mean? So it was just a... It was a it was a whole different era back there in, in, in television and stuff. You know, Nick, you know what? So you get to the Lakers, all of a sudden they draft magic, things start happening, and we started kicking ass. And the first ass we kicked that really uh, resonates with me is the Seattle Supersonics, because remember they had won a championship in 79. Yep. And they had Gus Johnson, uh late great Dennis Johnson, Gus Williams, I'm sorry, Gus Williams, Dennis Johnson, Sigma. Uh, what are some of your best memories of that season on our way to winning oh, the championship? You know, for me, it was great to get a lot of help because remember, I was playing against those guys. I had Lou Huss and Ron Boone, and those guys were in the twilight of their careers. So Gus and DJ, man, they were killing us, man. You know, <laughs> and then people would say, you and Gus. I'm like, look, I can get miles. I can't guard Gus and DJ. And I need some help. And so when you guys came and we finally started spanking them, man, it was just so good for me, you know. They go up there and get on Gus and DJ because they put us out of the playoffs, I think, my first two years. Yeah. We couldn't do nothing with them. They killed us on the boards. You know, Gus and DJ just killing us. You know, they were guard-oriented guard, guard offense. So, you know, Gus ran off all these picks. DJ killing us. They getting every rebound. Then, you know, when I had my boys in there, it was like, okay, now, let me see you. I got, I got a couple of cats that can ball with me. Let's Let's – Let's go now. Cause you know, they had Freddie Brown too. So it was like kind of us three against those three guys. It's like, okay, I got some partners that can ball now. Let's see what you're going to do. And you know, we had all kinds of attitude when we were young. So then yeah. we ended up beating them in the Western Conference Finals and we see ourselves against the 76ers. And you know, I always tell everybody about this story about Kareem getting hurt. And we're going into that last game, that, that sixth game and, and Magic gets up and says what he says and he does what he does. Uh, what were your thoughts about that that final championship game going into the well, game? Did you think we could I win? Knew, well, I knew we had a shot, and I knew we had to win, Coop, because, I mean, I keep remembering. That's when I tore my finger up. I don't know if you yeah. remember that game yeah. five, because I played with um, kind of like a cast on my left hand in that game, so I played one-handed. And basically, I wouldn't have had surgery right after we won. So if we had gone to a game six, I might not have been able to play as well. So – for me, in my mind, I'm like, man, we got to get this. We got to run these guys out of the gym because at that particular time without Kareem, you know, we figured we could sneak one. Now, if we had to beat them four out of seven with that team, it might have been a different story. But we had one game. So, you know, it was like, come on, man, let's get this one. Let's get this one and get this thing over with. And, you know, we were the kind of guys, man, we didn't play all this, let's lay back. You know, we put our foot on people, you know, and it was like, if we got you down 10, we want to get you down 20. We weren't going to relax. We're going to keep running. And no matter how tired we got, we sat on the side. They almost ready to break. Let's just keep it going. for Maybe maybe they'll break before we break. <laughs> but that was an incredible series, man. What was it What was it like being the Lakers at that point in time? Because you had, so you had Jack Kent Cook, they sold the Lakers to Jack, Dr. J. Buss in 1979. And then, of course, Magic and Mutt Coop come and, Pat Riley come like what was that like to be a part of that changing of that whole organization and the showtime like you were there at the beginning well you know for us it wasn't it wasn't a change in the organization because we weren't part of all those losses to the Celtics and stuff you know we were always like hey 
this is our generation. This is what we're gonna do. You know, for me, like I say, the third year to have to have Coop, Magic, Jim Jones came that year, and to finally get out there and start winning uh winning championships. I mean, that's what it's about. I look back sometimes and uh I didn't really realize how young we were, you know, and when we won in 1980, I was 24 years old. Yeah. Coop was probably 23, Magic was 23, Philip was probably 26. Kareem was our veteran guy. So we were like a young team that were out there putting it down and winning championships. So it wasn't like, you know, in our era, when you came out and you was the first or second round pick, it wasn't like, okay, we're going to sit you down and wait for three years so you know how to play. You had to come in and you had to play. Exactly. We were young. So we were going up against veteran guys at a young age and, you know, putting it on them. So, Nick, we win in championships. We win in 82, 80, maybe win in 80, we lose 81, win in 82. 83 comes, was another tough season. And I, 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 we've talked about this many times. Of those, those four or five years, what team do you think was our best team? Our best team that, that you've been with on that team. I think the, the best team that we, my, the best team that I think is when we won in 82, man, because we mm -hmm. swept everybody. And I think we were on our way to sweep in Philadelphia. And, you know, we got a few bad calls over there in Philly and everybody kind of relaxed. And I can, I can always remember being there. Come on, man, let's try to get in this game. Because I think we won game one, they won game two or something like that. It went like maybe six games. But our mind was to sweep everybody. So I think that team, because of our maturity, we all had played together for, you know, three or, you know, 82, 83 and 84 for like three years. So I think we were pretty secure with who we were and what we could do. So I thought that team, that team was an incredible team. And the speed at that time, the way yeah. we knew how to do each other's move, you know, we had the alley -oof to you. I mean, we had so many exciting things that we did on the court. And um, I think my the 82 team was the best one that I played with. You know, Norm, uh, people always ask me all the time, you know, you guys were winning championships and you were doing this and that. And me being married along with a couple of other guys, and I want to ask you this, what was the nightlife like for a single guy in Los Angeles? I mean, you know, you had the Playboy Mansion to go to, you had all the clubs, Form club, single women. And again, knowing that you're a happily married man, but uh, can you tell us, go back to those days and well, explain to going out? Well, when you were out to a club, how many women would jump on you? Uh, Oh, Coop, you know, we were like rock stars. I mean, it was the same thing as like being, being you know, I, I didn't experience that till I started hanging around with, you know, like musicians or big movie stars to see as I got older how it was. I laugh about this. Uh, I used to represent Jalen Rose. And I remember walking into the uh, a club with Jalen and Chris Webb, and it was me and Earl Curitan. And I was representing Jalen. And we were walking in the door, man. These girls almost knocked us down to get to those guys. And I laughed. I would say, at least say, excuse me. <laughs> we were laughing because we were like, that used to be us. <laughs> Nick, Nick, were they nice looking? Were they nice looking? You know, I always say Los Angeles had the most beautiful women in the world, man. Okay. The most beautiful women in the world. But but then, too, like I say, you know, during the season, you know, we, we had a purpose. If you remember correctly, they were first trying to take the wives. We was like, oh, no, don't bring nobody here. We're trying to win championship. Guys need to get their rest, you know, because if you had your wife or something on a trip, she want to go shopping in the middle of the day. She want to do something. And it was like, no, these guys need to focus on playing. Whatever their routine and rhythm is, we don't need anybody to change that. And I was the main one going, no, no, let these guys be by themselves. So whatever they do to relax, let them do it because we got to win. Listen, you listen to the Showtime with Coop podcast, Insightful BS by my Laker teammates and this one today is norm nixon norm uh we're in our lightning round okay i'm gonna ask you five names and you give me as much of a response as you want to these names i'm gonna ask you okay uh-huh all right donald duck richardson richardson the man that taught me how to play that was my high school coach uh fundamental worked us to death and that's where it all started for me kobe bryant one of the greatest to ever lace it up, one of the most competitive guys I've ever seen. And I had the opportunity to spend time with him post-career, had made a transition, and, and I really loved what he was starting to do post-career. 
Now, uh, before I go on the next three, I gotta, you, you can solve this, okay? Because a lot of people, and Jerry West is one of those people that says, Kobe beat me up. You were at that practice, that day, that, that workout that we had with him. Did I or did I not hold my own, Nick? Come on, tell me. Oh, now you, hey, look, when you try to draft somebody, you had to back up. You couldn't go as hard as you could. Now you're getting <laughs> lost the <of> draft pick. <laughs> You that held back. Nick, did I hold my own? Say yes. <laughs> yes, you held up. Yeah, yeah. Even though I wasn't there for real. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Nick, the I next name. My own eyes. The next name, Sincere Carey. Sincere Carey uh, asked you to use your uniform because somebody had gotten killed. They wanted to wear your uniform. Was that college? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't remember. Sincere Carey. Okay. But if well, I did, I probably allowed about, them That's going to come. You, see, now you're showing that you're a senior citizen because that's going to totally, come on you later. Totally, hey, totally, totally. Short term memory. Well, that's long term. Gone. <laughs> Dr. Buss. Uh, innovator. One of the most uh, innovative owners to step into the game, change the whole game, change uh, basketball into entertainment, was the, was the, out in the forefront for making those things happen, was a great owner. Uh, Jerry West. Jerry West, one of the greatest to ever do it. Uh, uh, you know, very intense. Didn't enjoy coaching. I thought with a, a, a better executive than coach. Nick, um, probably the second most hardest thing I had to ever experience was being a Laker. Uh, the first one was Magic when he announced to the world that he had HIV. He was HIV positive. The second one to me was when you got traded. And uh, that, that's something that still hurts hard, uh, real, real bad for me. Um, when that trade came about, how did you find out about the trade? Well, I knew I was going to get traded when Jerry West hugged me and told me he'll never trade me. <laughs> <laughs> never trade you. I said, I'm out of here. <laughs> but, but who told you? I mean, did, did they call you in the office or they call you on the phone? Riley told me, um, you know, I was at practice. He said, you know, they're trying to work out the deal with you, Norm. You know, don't come to practice, blah, blah, blah. You, you knew it was going to happen yeah. at that particular time. You know, so Riley just forewarned me to say, hey, don't worry about coming to practice. I knew I was out of there. I just wish they had traded me to a good team so I can come into the forum with but Houston. <laughs> my next question you go to the clippers you get traded to the clippers a, you know organization that's up and coming has some talent on that team what were your expectations going there well you know look we you had bill walden we had some pretty good talent you know my expectation everywhere i go is to win and hopefully the organization that would help put a winning team together but you know once you get there you you there is a difference between winning an organization and losing organizations and yeah. one of the biggest things is there's no consistency every year nine different players every year, different coach, you know, uh, anytime a great young player reaches the point to where he should get paid, traded him, the player was traded away. So the organization kind of set the, uh, 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 set the plate for how this, this team was going to be. So every year you go in, you think you're going to have a good team. It just didn't happen. Just never happened. You're listening Oops. to Norm Nixon on the Showtime podcast with Coop. Nick, a couple of more questions, man. I know you're busy. You got to go. Uh, Art, you had a question? Yeah. Were you, were you upset with Jerry West when he traded you? Was I upset? Yeah, of course I was upset. You know, I, but I think you reach a point where you say it's time to go. You know, and I think for all the things that had started happening to me, uh, um, just – without talking too much, because a lot of the things that had started happening to me, I thought it was time for me to go. Because I, I, I thought at that particular time, in particular with Jerry now, to coexist would have been very difficult. Because there were <laughs> accusations that weren't true. And I thought came, you know, from the front office and, and you know, with those kind of things, it's like, I thought it was time for me to go. Nick, you know, uh, well, I played 12 great years with the Lakers. Um, but when I went overseas, because some things happened to me too, where I had to kind of like, it was that time to go or get traded or whatever, I chose to resign. When did you know it was time to hang them, the sneakers up and when to let it go? Well, cool for me, you know, un unlike you guys, you know, I got hurt my 10th tenth, my tenth year, you know, I tore my quadricep tendon, you know, I came, that was a year injury. I came back the next year, I tore my Achilles. Then I came back my 12th year 
and you know again being with the Clippers instead of them taking advantage of you know my knowledge of the game or something it was just a bad situation so with that situation it's like you know what I've had a great career there was no such thing as free agency because if I could have uh, been a free agent I probably gone somewhere else and got myself back together to come back to play but being with the organization at that time it was like no nah, man I'm, I'm out of here it's not worth it for me to uh to be humiliated or to uh I had such a great uh career I didn't want to end it on like it was already a negative uh in a negative light I didn't want to make it even worse so it's like you know it's time for me to go and because I was coming off injuries I had already started transitioning out of the sport now I don't know how I would have felt like you guys who were just cold turkey one year it's like bam, I can't play anymore. So I had a chance by being injured, it made the transition a little smoother for me. Are you happy in retirement? Absolutely, absolutely. Why? Happy. Oh Why? man, wonderful kids, beautiful kids, beautiful grandkids, you know? And like you say, you knew when it was time to say, your mind says yes, but that body says no, so you better get happy. <laughs> is is, your, is your son playing here? The, the beautiful Debbie Allen, uh, who just got an award? Norm, talk to us a little bit about that, about her. Uh, Debbie just was a uh, Kennedy Awards recipient. Um, wow. She went along with uh, Garth Brooks, Joan Baez, Dick Van Dyke, and Kamora, the great violinist. So it was such a great uh, group of honorees. And because wow. of COVID now, it was a, a very intimate kind of setting. So we had an opportunity to spend a time with a lot of other honorees and with the highlight being having a hour to go over and spend with Biden in the White House and walk around with him and talk to him. Wow. It was, it was just, a, uh, it was great. I mean, it's coming on, uh, uh, the air date is June 6th. Um, I'm saying this because I don't know when this is going to air. I don't know if I should say it, but it's this Sunday. It's coming on this Sunday. I mean, you guys can edit that out. Okay. And your son is playing you in the new HBO Showtime series? Yeah, Showtime series. He's playing me. You know, I saw a little bit of it, but it's, it's difficult to watch. <laughs> to say to me. They say anything bad about me? <laughs> they're probably going to get all of us. They're going to have to, they're going to take their artistic license to do. And I told him, man, just don't have us looking too stupid, man. We were, we were interesting interesting team is for some reason people think they can come replicate the basketball we played i say you can't even get a pro team to replicate that do you think <laughs> actors can it's not possible you guys need to do you know set up one or two little plays and pretend you were doing some showtime you can't get out and play like we did nick uh, uh should i get an attorney to represent me man <laughs> <laughs> hey look, i might be with you let's watch it together we'll see what our next step should be wait but your son's like gave you any of the secrets you, you got a guy on the inside here I to help you out i don't want to know <laughs> <laughs> hey, last two questions for norm nixon nick uh the lakers they're in a dilemma okay they lost the phoenix the clippers are in a dilemma they just but they tied that series up uh, what are your thoughts about both of those teams? Well, I think the Clippers have a better opportunity to get out of it because I, I was shocked at how bad they were getting beat when they all first started. Did it seem like they're, they found their legs? They starting to play a little better now. I think Luca is a little hurt up. And, you know, these guys said they don't put wood on them. I said, you put a little wood on Luca. Then them start feeling like he's in the NBA instead of running around in the European League where you can't touch anybody. So I think they started doing that. And maybe these guys have caught their rhythm because they're not suffering from any injuries. With the Lakers, I think the injuries were devastating. I think Father Time, like you say, is touching LeBron a little bit. He can't carry it. Then with uh, with Anthony, even if he comes back, you know, he was dealing with uh, some Achilles problems. Then he really hyperextended that leg. And when I watched that game, I said, he's not sore now, but the next day he's going to be sore. Then he hurt his groin. All those things happen because, you know how it is, Coop, you compensate. Yeah, you can yeah. say so with the growing pool and you can't bounce back and just play off that thing. So the Lakers are in, in a in a much worse spot than the Clippers. Wow. My boy, Norm Nixon. Nick, last thing. What you got going? You want to want to pump anything up? Oh, we just talk about, you know, we building a new 24,000 square foot uh, dance academy that should become wow. that we want to turn into a, you know, a cultural uh, educational is worth the performing arts hub, hub of the West Coast. We're the biggest uh, academy, I think, in the entire West Coast. And uh, completing that uh, should be finished in November. So I invite all you guys out to a grand opening. 
Hopefully you so. love Dance Force, Nick? Huh? Like you danced a little bit. Weren't you in Fame, the movie? Hey, man, I was in Fame, the television show. The television show, <laughs> yeah. So you gonna dance? I Can might get out there and dance too. You know, I got out there and sing. I might get out there and dance. Who knows? With it, well, however I feel that day, I might just do it. You know how we do? I might feel it one day. I see y'all. I might just start it grooving like we did. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. The effervescent young uh, Norm Nixon, but old on the inside, but young on the outside. Or is that, wait, old on the outside, young on the inside. Norm yeah, Nixon, yeah, yeah, Nick, yeah, yeah. thank you so much, sir. I appreciate you coming on, man. AT, that's it. My boy, Norm. All right. Thank you okay. guys for having me on. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Norm. All right. Okay, man. We'll talk. Take care. All right.